day, and, and this goes right with all of this, is what I like to call a, a, um, a mini emergency communication. It's a neighborhood-wide MCOM plan. And as I was saying, this is what actually gave rise to this effort because I was griping to Gracie about neighborhood council people getting ham radio licenses but not belonging to emergency organizations. And she said, well, why don't you? And I said, why me? And she said, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but this, you'll hear about the right way to do this. And this is something that can be done in a single neighborhood council area or in multiple neighborhood council areas that, that um, um, adjoin one another, have a good physical boundaries, and have certain problems that you'll hear about as to why this came about because of the problems within those areas. Introduce yourself to those who don't know you. I think I know almost everybody. Uh, Michael Schlenker. Uh, I am a resident of the Bella Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council. Um, I am also an ACS uh, volunteer. Um, I look around the room, I would say 80% of you are probably ham radio operators. Anybody not? Uh, that's close, maybe 75%. All right, FRS. You guys have FRS radios? All right. So I didn't really plan this, but um, this kind of ties in to the five steps plan. I didn't know that the EMD was really pushing this. Um, this, uh, in the neighborhood, in the five steps plan, it talks about, there's a section on communications. And I think those of us that are involved in our communities and communities next to us that are setting up their plans, it's important for us to discuss communications, what you might have set up in your community and what they're going to set up in their community. And uh, Len made a good point this morning. He was talking to a couple of neighborhood councils who said, we're gonna get a bunch of radios and we're gonna figure out some channels to be on and we're just going to do our own thing. And they didn't realize that there's actually a city plan that's put in place to keep neighborhoods from uh, interfering with each other. So um, how many of you have plans for your neighborhoods? I know Battalion 2 has one. Carolyn, you have one. Uh, Lake Balboa has a very vigorous one. Um, so most of you use ham radio. I know Battalion 2, you guys do an FRS check-in, Lake Balboa does both ham and FRS. Carolyn, are you guys FRS? As well? uh, basically FRS, basically. Yeah. We have some ham. Um, so uh, in the uh, in the five steps plan, there's a whole section on communications teams and communication. And I've noticed a few of the plans out there have just kind of taken verbatim what's in here and uh, kind of put, oh, we're all going to meet at the fire station and we're going to you know, determine uh, what what channels we're going to use. So here's uh, Wilbur Tarzana. They're going to use runners and FRS uh, communications on channel two. Now, what would be great for this neighborhood is to know what the other neighborhoods are using. Because if they're starting to call incident command and three other neighborhoods all have incident commands and they're all on FRS two, you can have people going in various places. So. As these neighborhoods are starting to develop their five-step plans, it's important that they understand which channels the other neighborhoods are using. Um, the folks out in Topanga use FRS channel 7. And they say, everybody, we use channel 7. Stay off channel 7. And everybody listens to them because they've kind of put the flag in the ground that they're on channel 7. Um, Lake Balboa uses channel 5. You guys use channel 2 out in the, out in the battalion 2. Um, now, the one thing with this plan is it doesn't say who's at the fire station and what's going to happen from the fire station to the rest of the city. Um, here's the, the Mosher Homer, I hope I said that right, uh, neighborhood disaster plan. Uh, they've incorporated FRS radio and CERT uh, and um, uh, ham radio using the CERT comm plan. And for those of you who don't know what the CERT comm plan is, on the CERTLA.com website, there is a plan for the city of Los Angeles that lists the amateur radio frequencies that you would use in your battalions. And they're set up in a specific way so that there's not interference between neighboring uh, communities. Um, so, uh, you know, in, in creating your plans or in helping your neighbors create their plans, 
make sure that you are not going to cause interference and that you all know what channels to go to for radios. Um, so I, I kind of took this plan and um, in my community, I live in Bel Air Crest. This is my neighborhood. Oops, hold on. This is my neighborhood. Um, we ha I took off all the names of the block captains. Uh, but this is kind of how we set up our neighborhood. This is a version of map our neighborhood. And we have uh, 14 block captains. Uh, we use the business band radios. Um, the, uh, we're very lucky that the HOA that I live in uh, pays for the license for a business band frequency that we use. Um, we only have one channel because residents were getting confused with two channels. So we went down to one channel. And our emergency plan calls for the residents to either report to their block captains or to uh, a big parking lot up near our clubhouse, which is our command center. Um, and then from there, all the messages would be passed via ham radio. Now, I'm the only ham radio operator, so I'm going to be very busy because I'm also the incident commander. But I wanted to start to find other ham radio operators in my community. Um, and I wanted to find other ham radio operators in my surrounding communities because I live, this is, uh, I live up in uh, Bel Air Beverly Crest, so this is my neighborhood council. Um, 27,000 residents. It was all the way uh, from the 405 on the west to the, uh, all the way to Laurel Canyon on the east, uh, Sunset Boulevard down there on the uh, south, and up uh, to Mulholland. Um, so it's a very unique topography up there. Uh, lots of hills, lots of canyons, and lots of little communities um, with their own emergency plans and their own emergency communication plans using uh, FRS radios, um, commercial radios. We have other communities that actually use the, the business band commercial radios. Um, we actually have a group that uses CB radios um, and has for the last 20 years very successfully. So, um, we started meeting at, the, at, our, at our Neighborhood Council Emergency Preparedness Committees. And each of us started discussing how we all have inter-community communications. But we didn't know how we were going to talk to each other. So, for instance, my neighbors across the freeway or Mountain Gate, they use FRS radios. So I have an FRS radio, I can listen to what they're doing. So I started talking to them about what their plan was and what channels they're going to be on. Um, my neighbors to the, uh, to the east uh, use uh, a business band radio that I can't uh, get on. I, can't, I don't have their frequencies. I'm not licensed to be on their frequencies. Um, so we can't communicate with each other. Um, the group that had the CB radios, I actually bought a CB radio for our, for our emergency preparedness neighborhood emergency preparedness so that I could talk to them. All of these discussions in our committee meeting came up with the fact that we should really try to um, really try to, to set up an intra-neighborhood council communications group. So they thought that was a great idea. We formed a subcommittee and they put two of us on. We kind of volunteered. You get a great, you have a good idea, they're going to put you on a, uh, they're going to put you on the committee. So I said I would do the committee, but I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to do something. I just didn't want to have another meeting after meeting. And I find that a lot of the emergency preparedness committees, we have meetings just to have meetings, but we actually don't do anything. So I said, if you're going to set up a subcommittee, I'm going to do things. I really have some goals, and I want, to, I want the neighborhood council, and I want the emergency preparedness committee, I want them to back me up when I start taking things to the neighborhood council board. And they said, yeah, sure. I said, great. First thing I want to do is set up a communication plan. So we, they said, great, write one. Well, I went to my good friend Jonathan Zimmerman, who put up a uh, comm plan on the CERT LA website. And I basically stole that comm plan, and I modified it a little bit to make it for a neighborhood council. So uh, for those of you that have never been to the CERT LA website, it's, uh, Address is up there, CERTLA.com. If you hit backslash radio, it will take you to everything radio related to the city of LA, including the CERT comm plan, uh, the manual, the organization charts, um, 
how to talk on the radio, uh, use of FRS and GMRS radios. There's a lot of great information on there. Um, if you click at the very bottom of the first page, you'll see it says Radio Communications and Information Downloads, which will take you to the, the comm plan. So I suggest you take this and modify it for your neighborhood council. It's very easy. It talks about how to use tactical call signs for your neighborhood. Um, it talks about how to use, um, how to share the bandwidth and share the frequencies. Um, so the, the, our subcommittee of two, we, we basically wrote what was the the Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council Communication Plan. And um, we basically took the CERTCOM plan, we carved out the areas of our battalion, which we, we are Battalion 10, Battalion 14, and Battalion 9, and we kind of localized it within our neighborhood council that these are the frequencies that people are going to go to. Um, <coughs> the uh, and this is, this is a citywide plan, and I, I think that if we've got neighborhoods who are setting up communication plans, they need to follow this, because if they don't, they're going to be on frequencies that the rest of us are on. Um, so this is the uh, communications plan that I wrote. I kind of did a word for, you know, I, I, I plagiarized a lot of it. Jonathan said I could. He's put it up there for that reason. And I just changed where it said the CERT comp plan, and I put the Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council comp plan. Um, one of the uh, little unknown facts is that CERT has their own repeater. You have a primary repeater, uh, CERT Channel 8 on the comm plan, and it sits up in Coldwater Canyon and Mulholland, which is actually in my neighborhood council district. So we started using that repeater as our primary channel for, um, for contact, and then we would move to one of our simplex frequencies. Do you have a Don't we have two? Hmm? Eight and 16. Uh, 16 is uh, in the, uh, is the Hughes Amateur Club uh, repeater. But yeah, we, we have actually three repeaters. There's, a, there's two two meter repeaters and one uh, 70 centimeter repeater. And the great part is nobody was using this repeater. So I asked, uh, I asked Chief Knight, I said, can I use this for my neighborhood? Can I use this repeater on Saturday mornings? We're going to do a check in. And he said, sure. All of a sudden, I've got access to a repeater every Saturday morning. My group does a little check-in. You know there's a website where you can put in a uh, zip code and find out all the ham operators? Oh, I have that on here. Because uh, that was my next thing, because I really didn't have a lot of hams. Um, so again, this is the continuation of my plan. And I had, I had a plan that wasn't only the amateur radio plan, but also a tactical plan for local groups. Uh, you see on the chart, I've got groups with FRS, CB radio, um, I've got groups that don't have any radio communication. They have runners. So I wanted everyone in those little groups to also have a ham radio operator so that, they could, so that we could all start to talk to each other. Um, we, uh, we have a plan, and I needed, I needed to get some people involved. Um, so uh, I, I did exactly what Carolyn said. There's a website that you can go to, and you can find hams in your area. I reached out to every ham in my area, and I got one response back, and that was from uh, the gentleman's sister. He was a silent key, and the sister said, this is a great idea. I wish my brother was still alive to be a part of this. It was a little disconcerting, um, but I started being persistent, and I started finding other hams, and literally going into those neighborhoods and going to those committee meetings with those individual neighborhoods and saying, hey, did you know that this guy is ham in your neighborhood? Um, <clears throat> One thing that I really wanted our, our council to do, and it actually came up as an idea, one of our board members suggested that the neighborhood council purchase radios. Now, we began kind of this journey navigating the neighborhood council system only to find out that the neighborhood councils can't own equipment. I knew nothing about Dunn, I knew nothing about Empower LA, but the neighborhood councils can't own equipment. They can, they can rent equipment, but what I was told is that they cannot own equipment. Might, might be different, maybe some things have slipped through it. But I was told that we get kicked back through the Department of Neighborhood Power. Much of the fact that equipment, it was the fact that it was rate. Well, that was the maybe it was a, a, a copier it might have gone through. Mm -hmm. Computer. Computer. Um, so, 
One of the things we came up with was this proposal. And I kind of enlisted um, my board members, and I enlisted them to submit this to Dunn kind of in a pre, uh, kind of pre-submit this. I wanted people to poke holes at this. I wanted to see what wouldn't work, what would get kicked back, and how we could refine it. Um, so really embracing those board members and telling them what I wanted to do. Um, put together this proposal. We explained that we had a plan. Um, we explained that we wanted to do two things. I wanted to identify amateur radio operators in the area. Uh, I wanted to train them on how to use the radios. I found that a lot of people have licenses, but they don't know how to use <coughs> the radio. So I wanted to have training sessions. I also wanted new volunteers who might actually have more of an emergency preparedness interest, but have, know nothing about how to get your ham radio license. So I wanted to assist them. I wanted to have community meetings where I could show them how they can get their license. We've actually, we actually had a couple classes, study classes, and we actually had a testing in our area to get residents licensed, and then we had equipment that they could use to train on. And I'll tell you how, how we figured out the, how they can use the equipment. Um, part of my proposal, and I'm happy to share this to any neighborhood council that wants to even change, change we can, you know, change the equipment around, change the name around, and you could present it. Um, I explained to the, to the neighborhood council that we had a plan. Um, I explained that we wanted to implement this plan, and we were using all of the city, uh, LA Fire Department, and um, CERT comm plans to talk amongst ourselves. Um, <coughs> Uh, I gave them a little flow chart on how to, uh, you know, how it would all work, um, and then I put together the proposal. Um, because of our area, I couldn't just get um, little HT radios. We needed something with a little more power. And because of the canyons, um, I wanted to come up with something that was uh, repeater-based. I wanted portable cross-band repeaters that we could take out into areas um, that we have difficult communications in. One of the biggest things that we uh, practice is with brush fires. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to say, I don't know if that's working. No, it's working. Okay. Just want to say, if anybody doesn't understand some of the terms that are being used, like cross-band repeaters and stuff, you know, the ham radio operator probably use, raise your hand. So that you don't get lost in all of this, okay? That's all. And you'll um, get an answer to the question. I have that same problem with the neighborhood council because you come up with this equipment list and you're talking about things that you want to buy with their money, but they have no idea how it's going to work. So again, I took some nice little stick figure pictures and I explained to them how the radios would work in our area, how a crossband repeater would work in our area. When you sit in front of the board of the neighborhood council, everybody starts asking you all of these questions. So you need to know all of the answers. <coughs> try to, so what was good is that I sat with a few of my board members and I started pitching this and they started having these questions. What's a repeater? How are you going to use it? And I came up with a lot of this information that I could then represent to the entire board. Um, <coughs> I showed them pictures of the equipment I wanted to buy. Right? They like to see what is this. So there's the base station uh, that we were going to do. Everybody needed a battery and an antenna. I wanted to get two of these. Um, I wanted to get some handhelds and I wanted to get chargers and adapters for your car. Um, and then they wanted to know how much it was going to cost, right? They always want a budget. So I broke it down into the unit price, the sales tax, who my vendors were. And then I finally, what's that? It was a little hard to read. Can you tell me how your uh, was? So it was uh, 59. 590492. The reason it's 590492 uh, is that there was a, uh, at $6,000, there's more paperwork to fill out. <laughs> and I didn't have the time or the energy to fill that paperwork out. So I modified the budget a little bit, cut one radio, and got it magically below the $6,000 mark. Again, pitching this ahead of time helped me understand what my final pitch was going to be. Right? I tested the waters. Um, I also mentioned how I was going to implement this. Everybody asked me questions. How is this, 
how are you going to get equipment and how are you going to give it to people? Who gets it? How long do they get it for? Where do they keep it? How do they maintain it? I had the lawyers all stand up and ask questions about liability. And I said, look, this is a program that hasn't been done before. This is something new. You have to embrace this. And you have to know that we're going to try, right? We're going to, we're going to when, when you're doing something for the first time, you've got to have a little trust. And so I asked them to please trust me. Um, I set up that this radio equipment would be used for training purposes, so the person doesn't just get a radio. There's actually a, a form that they fill out where they get a loan, they get the loan of the radio for one year, that they're responsible for it. If they lose it, you know, they're responsible for it. Now, again, I don't know if we're going to go through a lawsuit for a $150 radio, but it, it's, it's a process that, that it sets, it sets a, a process in place, I should say, uh, for all of the questions that you're going to get. Um, the other thing that was very interesting is that I said this equipment would be owned by the fire department. So it's up to them to maintain it and to, um, uh, be, and to uh, maintain the, the loan program, which they liked because the neighborhood council didn't have to do anything. It was money that they could give to the fire department. The fire department owns the equipment to be used within the neighborhood council. So they like that. Um, but how did you work that one out? You said that's the fire department, but is it ACS specifically? ACS specifically. So ACS is an, ad, is an adjunct of the fire department. We're a volunteer organization just like CERT, right? Um, we have, as I get to the next slide, the LA Fire Department Foundation. Now, no one had ever put money through the foundation before for ACS. So I called up the foundation, I said, hi, I'm with the ACS. We are a volunteer organization under the fire department. Could we receive money through your foundation? You could buy the equipment for our, for our volunteer organization. And they said, sure. So I got all of their paperwork. I got all of the neighborhood council NPG paperwork. And I filled it out to make sure I had all my uh, I's dotted and T's crossed. <laughs> now you can do this for ACS, for radio equipment. I would assume you could do something for CERN. I haven't tested that one yet. Challenging. Have you, have you had anyone donate money for CERN, Carolyn? Um, so there are ways to do this that fit within the Neighborhood Council and the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment System. Uh, and this was a test case, and it worked. Um, so, so the the board uh, approved it <coughs> after much lobbying. It was, I felt like I was in Congress trying to get a, a bill passed. Um, uh, there was a second vote on the board, and they voted against it. And then one of my board members actually said, "I can't believe you're spending money on this and not the safety and security of the people of your of your uh, community." Then there was a new uh, uh, motion placed, and it was uh, passed. So now I had to actually implement this plan. Um, we set up some exam classes uh, in the area and uh, a licensing exam uh, that ACS uh, was happy to do. Um, I actually got Department of Neighborhood Empowerment to put out a press release on it with all the neighbor on all the neighborhood council uh, websites, and we actually had a few members from different neighborhood councils come up and get their license. Um, I had about 25 people in the first class. The second class went down to about 14, and I had 10 people show up for the exam. And all 10 passed. So uh, again, people thought it was a great idea, including some of the board members. They showed up to the first class, and as they went down and really started to dig into what it was, they realized it wasn't for them, which is fine. I don't necessarily want them uh, on the air. Um, I set up uh, what, what we call the Hillside Communities Emergency Communications Group. And uh, I'm always out there being persistent in preaching this. Um, this is who we are. Uh, these are our goals. We have radios. If you want to become uh, a licensed ham, we'd be happy to loan you a radio. We meet uh, every Saturday morning at 8.30 on the CERT repeater. And uh, we also have a meeting uh, on the second Friday of every month at Beverly Glen Deli. We get together, have some coffee, and talk about uh, what everybody's doing so this is an ongoing thing. This is now, I'm on my, my second board, neighborhood council board, and I've had to kind of re-educate them that we have this program, because I have new board members that are like, what do you mean we have three? Mm -hmm. um, 
So this is this is my start. I still this is uh, after uh, about a year um, of just two hams. Uh, we're now up to uh, uh, ten newly licensed hams, and I have eight communities now linked. So. Um, We've got Mountain Gate, uh, Bel Air Crest above me is uh, Cassiano. Uh, across the hill is Beverly Glen. Uh, down below is Bel Air HOA. And uh, up where all the hams are, of course, is where I had my testing. Um, and that's the uh, communities of Bel Air Glen and Bel Air Ridge. Um, and even this morning, I had six people uh, on the net. So each of these communities <coughs> checked in. Now, my goal now is to start moving east. Um, and I'm, I'm meeting with the individual HOAs and, and community groups who are setting up their emergency plan, <coughs> telling them about this. Um, so here's here's some ideas um, that neighborhood councils can, can kind of uh, hopefully some some ideas that you guys can use. Um, one of the things was Carolyn mentioned, um, you can look up hams by zip code. Um, all of this information is is public knowledge. Um, you can go to the website up there, which is, uh, I'll leave it up for a bit, radioqth.net <coughs> backslash zip lookup. You can also just Google ham radio zip code lookup. You punch in your zip code and you can uh, select a uh, CDS file, which is an Excel file. And it will download uh, an Excel spreadsheet of the list of ham uh, operators in your area. Um, this is my 90077 area, a little blurry, sorry. Um, but it gives you the street address. And lo and behold, I found out that I had a neighbor in my community that actually had her license. Now, she doesn't use a radio much, but I told her, you're my backup. I can't be on the air 24-7. So I'm going to need you at some point in an emergency to come up here and get on the air. Um, I've sent this out to the different communities. And they're like, oh, wait a minute. I know, I know this guy. He's my neighbor. And they had no idea that it was a ham radio. It's only the guys that have the big antennas on them. Most communities are like, oh, we don't want those guys. Those are the guys you need to embrace. Um, uh, maybe you hold a test session in a class. Um, again, neighborhood council could maybe spring for some donuts and coffee, right, in your group. Uh, put together a proposal to, uh, to, they love the term outreach, right? They love spending money on outreach. So if you could have a, a, a test session and uh, um, some study classes, ACS would be happy to come out and put one of these on. We'd love donuts, we'd love coffee. Um, a couple of other ideas. Um, maybe CERT could put a proposal together to get some radios. Um, maybe some FRS radios. Something like this might be around $400 for a case and radios. Maybe they're kept with the CERT battalion leader, maybe they're kept at the local fire station. Um, but a proposal like this, I, I think we've got a couple of neighborhood councils. Uh, Glenn, did you say that Valley Village actually, the neighborhood council has radios, or they just have a group uh, that does FRS? Uh, the indication was that they had actually purchased some. I know that um, Midtown North Hollywood purchased something like 80 FRS radios when they got uh, the backpacks, the certain backpacks. So all of those went in there. Right. So they, did, they did purchase the radios. That's the problem one. obviously becomes how do you store them and how do you account for them? That, that's your big problem. Right. Um, if they're proper, if, if the donation goes to CERT, right? Neighbor Trump is going to give a donation to CERT through the ACS. I guess ACS would be the radio component of CERT. They could give a donation to ACS. ACS would buy the equipment. It no longer becomes the neighborhood council's equipment. It's now up to ACS and CERT to determine where those radios lived and how they're dispersed. And the other alternative is, uh, I'm with West Hills Neighborhood Council. We set up uh, our own nonprofit, and we run the funds through that for them to purchase. So the nonprofit owns it. That's right. And the Neighborhood Council makes donations to right. the nonprofit. Right. We're doing the same thing yeah. in Mount Washington. If you don't want to set up a nonprofit, Foundations and other work around. You can go right. That was the thing with ACS. We didn't want to set up a, a nonprofit for ACS. Right. Come to find out, we actually had one. Yeah. Um, I have a couple questions because I'm kind of new at this. Sure. You see, you have your FRS team and you have your HAM team. Do you have anyone who's like communicating with both of them? Because again, if someone just has FRS, they need to 
get together with that? Is, right. is that a problem or a challenge? The, or? the way that the CERT comm plans work is that you have tactical teams with FRS that are your CERT members, and there is a ham op or a CERT ham operator, so that carries an FRS and um, a ham reading. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna say that I see a function of this group, the NCEPA, is solving all these legal problems in advance so that when we take the story out to 96 neighborhood councils, let's say, it's yeah. long, usually I'm told I talk too loudly. Now, can anybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all I said was, I see the function of this organization, amongst other things, is solving all these legal problems and presenting something that's essentially <coughs> fait accompli to any neighborhood council. So, hey, you don't have to start a foundation. There's lots of foundations. This organization, uh, well, Mike, has a, has a foundation. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention, Somewhere along the line a couple of months ago, somebody mentioned that part of the outreach is not just neighborhood councils, but neighborhood watch. And a lot of neighborhood councils and neighborhood watch have a kind of an intertwining relationship. But this is one way that we could possibly, uh, number one, outreach, and number two, have people. Yeah. Yeah, one, one, is this working at all? Yep. Not no. on right I'll just speak up loud. I'll use my big voice. Um, the one thing you have to remember if uh, your neighbor council does set up a, a 501, that no one from that 501 can be on the committee or, or take any part in any conversation, votes, or anything with regards to money going to that 501. It can be gone out of the room, the whole bit. That's your only danger, um, especially if it's a close, uh, close relationship. Well, I think knowing that the fire department will represent CERT and ACS as volunteers already has a foundation, and Dunn has already already put the money into that foundation. They've already got you know the, the paperwork's already been done. Right. Is this all <clears throat> predicated on the fact that the neighbor councils can't own the uh, radios? Is that, is that what you're saying? All right, Glenn. Go ahead. Actually, you probably could if you were going to set up a base station, say in an office or something like that, where the neighborhood council had physical control. It's like you've got a computer, you've got a copy or something like that. Yeah, something, yeah, yeah. Now, your, your, your problem is dispersing these items. Your, the neighborhood council is supposed to have responsibility and be able to account for them. And obviously, if you're hanging out radio, it's no, it's no good to have a hundred radios in one spot come an emergency because, I mean, so that's your problem. That's why using LAFD, um, the LAPD, their foundations to actually take this equipment and then they have it. That makes the difference. What if the neighbor councils have, like, like, like Studio City has, we have, we have an office. You have an office. If you had a base station that you wanted to set up, you can have a base station just like you can have a computer. Okay. And, but, but, you know, as long as you can make control. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to ask a question here, which is, in the event of an emergency, it might be useful to have 30 radio spread out amongst the people. Now, is this prohibition against neighborhood councils funding these 30 radios? Is that just something that is just, you know, something that came out of them and five years ago in the city laws? Well, there's no, there's no law. There's no law. It has to do with um, what happens to city equipment, okay? And if, if you're working for a department and something that's assigned to you is a specific handheld radio, um, that's one thing. But with neighborhood councils, um, the, the problem became things went out to individuals and they never came back. So they just will not work with you on funding this kind of thing where individuals have them at their houses, they just won't do it. Okay, but they won't do it. I, I think that this is a debate that's worth really having, which is to say, at some point, red tape ought to be cut. Some red tape is important to have, and I'll just shut up with that. Right. But 
It hadn't been fixed. Hmm? It's been fixed. Yeah. yeah. Through the, through the uh, firefighters foundation. So yeah. that problem's been fixed. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's just a simple, it's a simple workaround. It may be perfect, it may work citywide. I don't know if it works in Harvard. Yeah. 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 LAFD, the LAFD foundation, like the LAPD foundation, um, we wanted to get something for West Valley Division. And we've gone through the Valley Boosters, which is a nonprofit that works with the Valley Stations. And they see to it that whatever it is we want goes to that particular station. So it's the same thing with LAFD, their nonprofit. That's the work around. The, uh, so the neighborhood council will put the money into this nonprofit yeah. and the nonprofit will distribute it. There you go. And, and just to make a request down in San Pedro, uh, <laughs> our battalion headquarters station 112 just had the antenna knocked down. Uh, so we're looking for a new antenna. What would you like? <laughs> do, do a band? Something, that, something that's upright right now would be a start. <laughs> um, so uh, for the gentleman that asked about that, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm Linda Pruitt, Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council, and we have had a ham radio net and an FRS net now for quite some time. But Michael, I just want to congratulate you on what you've done here. This is absolutely amazing. I knew you were doing great things, but I had no idea that it was this involved and this comprehensive. Thank you for all your work, and we're going to be in touch with you to further our interests along these lines as well. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, you know you have a you have a you have a net. Um, uh, this is the Lake Balboa FRS net. Uh, I checked in, uh, the, it's the second Sunday of the month at 9.45. Um, I'm very, down there at the very bottom to the south. Um, their net control is kind of in the middle of their community there. And I was able to talk to uh, Granada Hills, to Bill, and uh, I think it's Ted up in Porter Ranch, uh, Gary out in Burbank. So all with, all with these little, uh, Cost, what they call Costco Disneyland radios. Tell them what your elevation was. Uh, 11. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mine is they were FRS street level. Street level. <clears throat> so you can talk a block. You talk a block. <laughs> no, um, for those, uh, I just got a, a, a mail this morning, uh, as some of you may have done. Uh, FCC is changing the FRS, GMRS. Um, Bands around and they're going to go up to two watts of power on FRS. I was reading this morning. Oh. I haven't seen that email. Yeah. So check your ACS email. Um, Dan sent it out this morning, as of yesterday. Uh, they, they're revamping the FRS GMRS plan. So. Patrick, did you? No. no. Um, so uh, some other ideas. Um, the the photo there. That's uh, that's my fire station. Um, found out there's a ham radio operator who's a firefighter there. Um, so I donated an antenna, some cable. Waiting for the radio? Radio's there too. Somebody else donated did, did that. You, did you donate it directly or you donated it to <coughs> donated the Donated this one directly. Um, I could have donated it in kind through the foundation. Yeah. Oh, um, forgive my ignorance. No, no, no. But an antenna and a repeater, two different things? Antenna and repeater, two different things. So this antenna allows someone to come up who has a radio, and they can tap into the antenna and use the height of the antenna to get the transmission. A repeater is going to take the transmission from one radio and repeat it, repeat that transmission on another frequency. Retransmit it. Now, the, now with repeaters, you have to have specific frequencies that you can transmit and receive on. And there are only so many frequencies out there that all of the repeater frequencies are used up by all various organizations. But there are, um, there are repeater pairs for temporary repeaters. So in my case, my two uh, uh, repeaters that I can set up, I, I have those programmed, so all my ham radio operator has to do is set it to the right channels and push a button and that becomes its own repeater temporarily. It's all within the FCC uh, uh, rules, abiding by the FCC rules. Yeah. Now, if you have an antenna, you have to physically be hooked up to the antenna? The antenna connects to the repeater. Yeah. No, it connects to the radio, whatever's on the other end. Right. So I could hook up one of my radios into this <coughs> antenna and all of a sudden it becomes a repeater. 
up on the top of Mount uh, the Mall. Yeah. All right, do you want to talk a little bit about how you will plant, what, how your plan is set up so as not to interfere <coughs> with others that are uh, perhaps using the frequencies uh, at, at a more distant location such as that, just based on the fact that there's a limited number of frequencies that we can use? Specifically for uh, repeaters? No, no, oh. um, within, your, within your group. So uh, within my group, I'm following the CERT comm plan. Uh, the CERT comm plan as uh, for my battalion a primary uh, frequency for contacts, which is repeater, and then it has a secondary. Uh, let's go ahead and pull. Uh, where's the comm plan? There you go. So I'm in uh, battalion ten. Uh, my backup. Uh, so that's my simplex frequency, 144.350. My backup is CERT channel 6. Um, now, if I, had, if I was interfering with folks on both of those channels, I would either reduce my power, because again, I'm up in the hills, or I would come up with another frequency to go to. Um, now, it's going to be tough and a disaster, because everybody that's bought one of their radios on Amazon for $40, <coughs> that don't even have a license, are going to be turning around and yakking on the frequency. <clears throat> so uh, a couple of the things uh, I've done personally is I've gotten radios on bands that people may not have access to. 220? Uh, 220. Uh, I just got 900. I have 1.2. Nice. Uh, I can actually talk to the EOC on 1.2 from my house. So. Um, I know in a, in a major city disaster, we have that, the, the big uh, San Andreas earthquake, these frequencies are going to be used up. Um, you look at all the radio groups, they all have these comm plans, and a lot of them share a lot of the same frequencies. So, uh, and, and you can share the frequencies. I mean, look at the fire department. The fire department only has, you know, a handful of frequencies that they use all the time for the entire city. So they dispatch everything on one frequency, and when there's an incident, they set up a comm plan, and they say, this is the frequency for that incident. And it works. Um, really hope this works. I think the only way we are going to test it is in an actual emergency. Um, <laughs> I tell you, 900 megahertz. I just, I just got some radios. I can talk all the way down in the OC. Um, and uh, all the way into the valley. And uh, not a lot of people have them. Now they will. Um, one other thing uh, uh, we've been doing, uh, we've had a couple of our neighborhood councils been very generous um, and have donated equipment to the ACS program to um, upgrade some of their current facilities. So we have facilities that have kind of been given to us. Radio, we have radio room here at the EOC. We have a trailer at station uh, 88 in Sherman Oaks that is our Valley Bureau. Um, we have another station up in North Valley, up in Sun Valley, we have equipment at. We have one down at uh, uh, Fire Station 5 down at, near LAX, and one down in San Pedro. The equipment in there is about 25 years old, so we've been upgrading this equipment. But again, we're the backup disaster communications. We should have functioning communications. And some of the neighborhood councils were very kind in putting, uh, donating money to us to actually physically upgrade specific radios and antennas at those stations. And Midtown North Hollywood and Valley Village uh, back in 2015 helped us upgrade the um, Valley Bureau uh, Command Center because they knew that's where the message has to go to get <coughs> out to the rest of the city. Um, so some, some other ideas. Um, and then lastly, um, most of you know these websites, but the, uh, if you want more information on what ACS does, there's their website. Um, the certla.com uh, backslash radio will take you to the radio, uh, all of the radio page. And then if you guys have any questions or you want to email me or you want a copy of this plan or you want me to sit down and help you write your plan for your neighborhood, happy to do that. Uh, KD6BAC at gmail.com. Open the question. Open the question. Two questions, um, and, and I apologize if you've already answered the first one. 
Is this presentation going to be available on, on the website at some point? I, I can. I've, uh, Mona Curry's actually asked me for a presentation, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll uh, uh, <coughs> happily give this to her so she can post it on the EMD site. Um, and again, if you want to send me an email, I'm happy to uh, send you my uh, PowerPoint presentation and you can edit it however you want. Again, I, I don't have any skin in the game. I don't make any money off of this. Uh, I did this for my community and I really want the other communities to know how to do it so that you're not affecting me. If you live in my neighboring community and you're all over the frequencies that I need to use, I should have should have been a better neighbor and told you to stay off my frequencies. <laughs> use your own, right? That's the biggest thing. Uh, and second question is um, when we uh, donate to the ACS, they, they decide uh, they've got this batch of stuff. Are we able to, to have them track where they distribute them or they distribute only to one port? Um, we have internally um, distribution list of this was donated by this neighborhood council and this is where it resides. So if anyone ever wants <coughs> to know where their equipment is, we, we know where it is. Then you can do that house by house. Do that. We could do that if it was a if it was let's say it was FRS radios to CERT teams, you know which CERT members have it or which fire stations have it. Um, if it was specific members, like in my community, I keep the log of who has the radios. And every year, when they come up for expiration, you know one of the qualifications I made is that you have to use it, right? And you have to be involved. You can't just get a radio, put it in a drawer in an emergency oh, board out, and hope that it works. So if you're not using your radio, I'm going to take it back from you. If you move out of the area, I'm going to take it back from you. Really good. Thanks. Yep. Who taught your class, the uh, uh, licensing class? Uh, we had uh, Jonathan Zimmerman, uh, Marty Wall, yep. um, and uh, Dan Tomlinson. Um, we did one in 2015. Uh, I just did another one because there was a little bit of interest. Um, and um, I actually taught most of that. Um, to go back and remember what it was like to take the technician class, yeah. but I, I, I succeeded. And, and of course, um, for those who want to save time, um, there's there's always Norm Goodkin's one-day right. class. It will cost you about fifty-five dollars, yeah. but that's for licensing, etc., and lunch. And uh, it's uh, on a Sunday, and it's now in Calabasas. Used to be at Lost Hills. Now it's in Calabasas. It's always Cal Stone. Yeah. Well, we call it, but not at the Lost Hill Station. Now, now they're doing it at one of the city centers. Um, and he gives three classes. Don't, you, you've got to stay up there. Okay. Uh, three classes. One is the licensing class. Uh, the next one is what kind of radio should I get? And the third Sunday is how in heaven's name do I program this thing? Uh, so um, um, you, can, you can work that with, with neighborhood council people who, who want it. It's very handy for people in the valley. It's not so handy for other people driving up there uh, on a on a Sunday morning, but it, it works well. Yeah, I got my I got my technician license through North. So yeah, and those two follow-on classes are also pretty part of the initiative. I think it's right. seventy-five. He's what? Seventy-five. Seventy-five now? Yeah. The okay. course is taken at the Calabasas Community Center because it takes several hours to go through the course. It includes lunch. You take the test. At the end, 35 multiple choice questions, you can miss nine and still pass. It's a pass fail, so don't ask which ones you missed or how many you got wrong. <laughs> uh, the next two were in the morning at the Wasco Sheriff Station, which is like a block away. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's all on that. And then the other thing I do with my group is I, I, do, I do meetings so that they come with their radios and I teach nope. them how to use the radio. Anymore. What? It's all computer control. It's all computer control. There's no tuning. It's based upon, it's all, you know, phase lock loop and digital, so. Oh yeah, no, 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 nobody, no, nobody knows how to tune up radios anymore, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, linear, even the linear is up to 600 watts, and digital ties your radio, you don't do any tuning. Actually, they're up to 1,500. If you want, if you want to spend the $6,500 for the, for the, for, for the amplifier. All right. <laughs> so, now, what, what Jonathan was talking about, this right here, this will cover three of the bands that he talked about. Um, two meters, 70 centimeters, and 220, all in one radio. Um, so these are good to have. Which one is that? That's the uh, um, Kenwood TH, TH6. Still very popular. Very small buttons. Very yes. small buttons, and, and, and I've got to send this back so they can, put, they can put a new facing on it because the buttons are beginning to wear. You can tell I use it. 
but um, it's a very handy radio because it covers three different bands, and, uh, and the 220 is one that a lot of people don't use anymore, unfortunately. That's a long story, but we won't go into that. Uh, I'm trying to set up a, a Northeast LA disaster radio group to do something similar. A three-day course, we're going to teach how to be a good radio operator, not so much how to pass the exam. Um, first one is a course on how to be a good op a radio operator. Second is a review of the test, and then the exam. And the third is how to use your radio. And we'll actually be pushing uh, a particular radio. So if you don't have a radio, you don't want to go buy one, we have a recommendation. We'll have a, a stockpile that we can sell. And then we'll work on setting up computers and stuff like that later on and start doing nets for the people. But it's been hard to get off the ground. I've got um, three amateur extras in my area that are two of which are ACS members. <coughs> they, uh, they need motivation. I need to drive the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, that's the problem is that unless someone really cares about what they're doing, <clears throat> a lot of people won't jump on board. Um, I had 25 people at my first uh, test session, and it started whittling down when everyone rolled their eyes and said, what do you mean i got to study for 10 hours? <laughs> and take a test. And take a test. I now go into these things, and I say, well, I guess it doesn't mean that much to you. If 10 hours of your life is not worth your <laughs> life, the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, it's then, that's, then you, that's, that's, that's where you're at. Um, to me, this was something important. Uh, I got my radio license, and I wanted to know how I was going to talk with the rest of the world, and that's where I joined ACS. Oh. Um, I was tired of hearing uh, all the guys in the valley on the pop assist. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that we're going to be doing is um, we'll be covering all the different like FRS, GMRS, MERS, and why you should have an FRS radio, why you should get a GMRS license, and why, of course, you should get a ham license, and how you can use each of those different things together. It's not a ham only, <coughs> um, everything else is crap type of class. That's, that's, a, that's a great concept. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to be doing classes like that, let me know, and I will see if I can get it on the um, calendar uh, for things that go out on the GM's report oh, great. From, uh, from Don. Might as well put it on the calendar so that people begin to know about these things. These meetings are put on the calendar uh, so we can get other things up there. Maybe get a, um, an MCOM or actually an emergency preparation section that, uh, that they, you know, like they have the mayors and all of this good stuff, just have an EP little section that will announce what's going on in emergency preparedness throughout the city um, each week. I think that would work well. Question. It's a good idea. I'll remember that. This uh, cert training propagandized people for taking the ham radio. Um, some of the instructors do mention it. Yeah. Some push it a little bit harder, others. Okay. There, there is there is not that I know of a radio component within or a communication no. component within the CER training. No, there is. Easily asked politically. Because FEMA, after all, CERT is a FEMA certified course following FEMA guidelines uh, or Homeland Security. So to make it official, you have to work from that level on down. But as uh, Patrick said, a lot of local guys do. When I had my CERT class in Granada Hills, we make a big picture of the same thing with Bob Bowe sponsored CERT class. And many of hands are in there and are needed, so word gets out. But we just did a CERT class in Lake Balboa, and Dan Tomlinson was part of that class. And at the end, we had a drill, and we had four sections set up, one for communication, one for search and rescue, one for fire suppression, blah, blah, blah. And Dan came out, brought his truck, set up the antenna, uh, and we did. We ran the entire group through all four sections. So all four of them got exposed to ham at the last UMRS. And Susan Jensen, who taught the class, is very good about talking about communications. Yeah, if she's got people in, in the CERT group who are interested. I'm trying to lobby where we would go to one of the CERT classes that we show up yeah. and let people know that, yeah, I think that, that there's, other, there, there's other ways to, to volunteer. Yeah. I know this Tuesday they're starting a CERT class in Silver Lake, so I don't know if you want to stop at that. Tuesday, it starts. Class one Tuesday from 6393 at Ivanhoe Elementary School. I mean, I'm not in charge of it, I'm just right. one of the participants, but if you 
want to go with you. Anybody in Silver Lake Battalion want to go there? Without contact. I'll be going there, but I mean, I'm just, whatever. You can't just pop in and yeah, that, that's, <laughs> talk yeah. to um, contact the instructor and, and you know, right. so you can make room for the We're working on it. We go at the last class to right. talk to them. You don't go at the first class, but they're just fine. Never mind, sorry. No, no. <laughs> so the week, I, I try to go to the ones that are local in my area just to pop in as a, as a guest and stand in the back. Everyone's like, well, what are you doing? And, uh, give a little spiel. But um, no, it's a great idea. And I wish, I wish more of the certain instructors would talk about it. Because again, it's a component that we need to know. Uh, or, or at least talk about runners. I, mean, you know, I think tapping into kids on bikes or kids on skateboards and, and making them a part of your you know, plan. I mean, you've got all these kids in the neighborhood, and I think people go, oh, those are the, the hoodlums on bikes. Well, those guys are going to be the ones you're going to be yeah. able to get messages yeah. to, to to run down the street. And when I was a kid growing up in the valley, I knew the valley like the back of my hand. Um, so if someone gave me a message to go take somewhere, I, I, I would have loved that opportunity. I actually had somebody at uh, Neighborhood Council Valley Village and we talked about the jump start say, well, are you suggesting I go and just knock on my neighbor's doors? Yes. I said, yes. <laughs> so, but this is, this is a really good plan. This works well. Um, where this is located is, is specifically, um, um, is an area where it works well because of all the, the, the um, uh, specific neighborhoods within the neighborhood and each one having uh, you come out into my area um, in Tarzana we do have some uh, homeowners associations within it however they're all gated and none of them want to talk to you they say if you want to talk to us go talk to our management uh, group and they have absolutely no idea what's going on but we're trying to break into those um, but this for much of the city this works well because we know in each neighborhood council area you've either got neighborhood watch groups or you've got homeowners groups things of that nature that were there before the neighborhood councils and and this is where to go and you see it takes a lot of work and i give them a lot of credit for what's been done there so um it's going to be not easy to duplicate but i think it's a really good effort if you take this along with what we had from topanga um earlier these are good plans that work well. Uh, I listened to when Topanga had their fire, what was that, I want to say a year ago, year and yeah. a half ago. Um, I listened to their ham radio operators. And I was able to hear what was going on on the ground. And my sister-in-law lives out just off of, in Woodland Hills, and she was terrified that this fire was going to come get her. And I was calming her down, telling her what was going on. She goes, I'm not seeing this on the news. I'm not seeing this reports. How are you getting all of your information? I said, there's about eight guys talking about it on ham radio. Yeah. So, you know, so, so uh, uh, you know, especially in our area, we actually did a training. Um, we, we all got in the air and we started simulating that there was a brush uh, in a drill and where it was coming and where people were evacuating to. Um, I, I look at this and I, and, and, you know, some of my friends who talk about the last fire from Sunland to Hunga, how great a system this would be for the Sunland to Hunga area to communicate because um, they can't talk to the rest of the world in a lot of those places in Sunland to Hunga, but they can talk to somebody at the top of the hill who can talk to the rest of the world, and that's the difference. So, Michael, thank you. That's great. Okay, so everybody's going to go out and set up an MCOM system in their, uh, in their neighborhood council, right? Working on it. Working on it. There we go. We're going to drag Michael out. Yeah. That's fine. I, I, uh... Well, duplicated. I'm starting to get really good at talking to neighborhood council boards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of talking to neighborhood council boards, uh, I've been talking to a few of them. Um, I don't know what's going to happen um, with this whole budget thing with the emergency bids that we've talked about. Um, you notice they, the um, uh, LA Police Protective League is griping that the police budget has just been cut. Um, according to what our mayor said at his budget review, um, if they're not going to fund certain things for LAPD, are they going to fund things for emergency preparedness? Good question. If your neighbor council hasn't taken up the um, specific budget item with regards to Dunn and EMD, there's still time because the budget talks are going on, they can still get them in. 
And the question was finally answered, and I can tell Bill the answer to the question that he, his board wanted. $192,000, we're told, will not fund four city employees. And so I posed the question to the guru, Gracie. I said, how does it work? And apparently all the department is responsible for is the salaries. And as long as they give out the salaries and the city says, yes, we'll do this, then automatically they apply certain formulas to those salaries and the benefits are all paid based on that. So the department doesn't have to say anything about the benefits. The city, if they're going to include them, actually puts those together. So what you're looking at is the salaries only, not the uh, 280000 or whatever it is to add all the benefits. That so was exactly the point that right. was brought up with our council is, what is the, it doesn't matter that it's only 192 yeah. for salaries, it still costs the city for all the benefits, right, right, right. all the grand total of where that money comes from. That was the question. Yeah, that's, and it, it's, it's a form, that it was salary, it's, a, it's apparently a formula that if they grant it, the city just automatically applies the formula. Yeah, but that's not the point. Oh, well, how much total? Exactly. Oh, nobody I knows yet. City, but, well, they should know because <laughs> if they got the formula, they have it. No, no, no. Because you no. told me that was only for nine months, not 12. Yeah, well, no, the department doesn't have the formula. That's something that is in, I don't know whose office it's in, but they end up, and nobody knows exactly where it's going to end up until the whole formula is That's done. why we couldn't get it. Yeah, so. over yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, we know that. So, um, let's assume, let's assume that they decide that funding this program is worth it, okay? And part of the pitch that I've been giving um, and will continue to give to city folk is that the money for the bins will come from the neighborhood councils that participate in the program, okay? These are neighborhood councils that are willing to put it out now if they were able to, but they're not able to. You can't do it. Do we have a price per bin? Um, I am saying that you're looking at somewhere for the five years, well, 5000 really isn't a, 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 a reasonable sum. That may be reasonable for initial setup. Probably over a five-year period, ten thousand dollars, maybe as much as thirteen thousand. So, since you have new boards that come in every uh, two uh, years, how or do so. you do that? <laughs> ah, that's the secret. The secret is that the neighborhood council, um, if this were set up, enters into an MOU with the department, EMD. Say it's a five-year MOU, and that MOU says that neighborhood council is going to be responsible for approximately this amount of money each year after this is set up to maintain it. And at the end of five years, if the neighborhood council no longer wants to participate, there's a certain amount of money that they've put in that would be used to decommission the, the, the bid. Okay? So that means a new board can't say, ah, oh, we're out of here. Okay? And the hope is that once everybody sees how it works and the importance of it, Everybody's going to stay in it. And maybe, just maybe, the city will start funding these things on an ongoing basis. I'll give, my hope would be that they would give EMD a specific budget item that says, maintain these bins. <coughs> yeah. Just so I know, when it gets decommissioned, does money go back to the neighborhood council? No, it goes, it, it, the decommissioning means that you, they've got to empty the bin out, they've got to do something with the bin, they're no longer stocking it. So no, oh, nothing goes back. Throw it away. Well, Hopefully, well, hopefully, if, if you plan it right, at the end of the five years, you're ready to start replacing even more. <laughs> yeah. What we're looking, what we're talking about is this isn't where somebody comes and says, hi, I want water. That, that's a different thing. Um, uh, there are certain emergency plans where the, where the city has contracted with a couple of outside vendors that will bring in food and water even before FEMA arrives. Okay, that's the plan. Whether it's going to work or not, I don't know. Uh, they'll bring it in whether they get it to you, I don't know. But these are for first responders. That's what these bins are for. They're for the CERT people. Um, they're for LAFD um, if, if they're close by. Um, these are the chainsaws. These are the, some of the blankets. These are flashlights. These are pry bars. These may be generators. All kinds of things that your first responders are going to need. And there'll be a list. And like I say, it's going to be customized. 
in my neighborhood in Tarzana, I can envision us needing one chainsaw, maybe two. Southern Tahoe is probably going to need five, okay? Because they're going to have a whole lot more trees that may come down on things. But we do have one area in Tarzana. We're trying to get the very exclusive country club to trim their eucalyptus trees. Because every time we have a high wind incident, we have a eucalyptus tree across Reseda Boulevard. <laughs> Somebody's got to come up and cut it apart. We're asking the police top those things and bring them down a little bit. They bring down power lines with them, too. Yeah, well, fortunately, where they are, the power lines are on the other side of the street, so they can't hit them, and the rest of them are buried underground. Yeah. High wind, you know our cab country club is going to lose one of their um, <laughs> trees. <coughs> Simple as that. So this is what those bins would be for. Um, as I say, if your neighborhood council hasn't taken it up and they care to, let me know. I can get you this information. Um, you can put a um, um, uh, CIS on the 600, you know, 16-600. Last year it was 15-600. And say, here, please get this in. Okay? May or may not. I don't know when. Veronica, do you know if EM has already been before the budget committee? Yes, that was um, Thursday. Okay, I don't know if Dunn's been there. I don't know. I think, I think the mayor's office was willing to take two employees away from EMD and give them one emergency employee or something like that. So it's, did that well, resolution that we formulated, did it ever go out to whoever it was, the city attorney or something? Yeah, it, it, went, it, it got communicated to the city. Yeah, yeah, we, we, and then the, the commission also wrote a letter. Assuming the best of all things occurs and they do decide to fund this thing, uh, a council who already has bins that are being used for another purpose, would they be allowed to use those bins which are owned by a nonprofit well, to they, be stocked with emergency supplies? You know, the problem is they're owned by a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. What the city attorney wants to see is those items under control of a city department. Their whole <coughs> bugaboo has been we don't want volunteers, us, managing these things because of the liability that occurred. You know, um, somebody comes to you and says, ah, oh, my daughter is bleeding to death, I need bandages. You say, I'm sorry, we're out of bandages. Why didn't you stock enough bandages? And then sues the city, okay? That kind of thing. Or the volunteers don't rotate the, the materials and the, uh, properly, things like that. But it appears they're willing that if a city department, such as EMD, administers the process and takes care of it, that's okay. Yeah, Bill? I'm trying to figure out a nice way to formulate this. <laughs> you um, don't have to, just say it. If the city's in charge, does that mean it's going to have to be city employees suspension the supplies? And they won't allow volunteers to do it because they get you back to the same issue. No, no, no. We, we, there, there's ways to get around them. Okay. Are there are ways to get around. Use those ways. There are ways to get around. Are they willing to use those ways? That's the key factor. Yeah, yeah. No, no. We, we know we know that the neighboring councils are going to be people who are going to be. Yes, we want certain people there. We would want quote trained people at the location. But once again, these are city sanctioned things, sir. ACS, etc. So you know, but you want the neighborhood council to come up with the funds to maintain it. Only allow cert to deal with it. Gee, there's no cert on the neighborhood. No. See the issues. But I, I understand. Yes. Yeah, who has a neighborhood with no certs? Yeah. I don't even believe that exists. But a neighbor, a neighborhood with no certs. With no certs at all. No, no. There's got to be a neighborhood. There's got to be certs in the neighborhood. Certs <laughs> <laughs> there, but the NCs may not know. Five thousand. Oh, well, hey. No, no. I mean. Yeah, um, anyway. just to sell this to my council, um, is there, I know it's going to vary from area to area, but is there a list of basic cash contents for one of these bins? Um, that is something that would be worked out between the, well, EMD has a basic list that they like to see. They haven't published it yet. But I keep saying that's going to be worked out between neighborhood councils and EMD. You know, you'll, there'll be a basic list of what, People from certain need. Right. But what if, I'm gonna, if I want to make a pitch to my council, I need to have a basic framework to operate from. You're going to have emergency supplies that CERT would use. You're going to have chainsaws. You're going to have water. You're going to have 
battery? No, not water. Oh, excuse me. You're right. No water. So you're that's gonna, what I'm saying. You're, you're going to have it somewhere that I can find. Um, I imagine. I imagine I could ask EMD what they would recommend going in. That'd be great. Because uh, FEMA recommends what goes into these emergency things. That's you know. really part of our responsibility is to get to the end of it. I yeah. remember Sir having a course on how to use chainsaw. Yeah, well, I have never learned to use a chainsaw, and I'm not sure I ever will. And if somebody wants me to start one up and use it, I'm certainly not going to try because I will hurt myself. Okay. Here, here. Well, specifically to that point, Sir says if somebody has a chainsaw, that person uses the chainsaw, yeah, yeah. not another volunteer. That's what my hand says. Sir doesn't say anything about chainsaw. No. Um, the that, is, that, that's why when you check map your neighborhood and everything, or use five step, find the person who knows how to use the chainsaw. Yeah. Um, the person who owns it. <laughs> who the EMD is formulating this, and can we, at least the CERT people, kind of step in and, and get involved problem. with that plan? The, the, problem, the problem is the chicken and the egg, okay? Yeah. There's nobody in, and, and Veronica can, can correct me if I'm wrong, there's nobody in EMD right now that specifically quote emergency preparedness for this type of thing. Okay. For the bin? Yeah. No, we currently don't have. Yeah, that. you see, they, they they don't have anybody. So there's no list yet. Well, it's not that it hasn't been published. There is no list. No, no. They know essentially. I can I can get an essential thing of what they would like in the bins. Okay. I, I don't think that's difficult. Um, I could go through Aram and he could say, okay, we could make up a list because they've got an idea of what they want. Can we okay. do that? They, huh? Can They're we already talk? I can ask. I imagine, it, I mean, there are people who know what should go into those bits. This, this would be easier to sell under something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, then I'll, give him, I'll give him a jingle. Okay. Um, kind of along these lines, do they have, I mean, I know it's not um, in place yet, but do they have a size of the bin? What should go in there? Mm -hmm. Hang on, let me, let, I'm going to get a pen. Okay, your, your bins, okay. your bins are sta they're, they're standard. So when I say a bin, you're talking about a shipping container. And um, shipping containers come in 20 by 40. Uh, they come a bit smaller than that. So the, the conics box. 20 by 40, no, I come 20, 20 by 8. 8 by 8 by 20. 8 by 8 by 20. That's one of them, yeah. You haven't seen the great big ones? Oh, yeah. They don't yeah, have four, 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 <laughs> eight by eight. You gotta be able to stack this up. Yeah. yeah. And, and the reason I say that is because that seems to me like a great giant bin. It is. And but the problem is in an earthquake um, emergency, distributing everything so far away. And we talked about skateboards and runners. Oh and no, stuff no, no, like no. That. You're, you're not distributing things far away. I know, but I'm just saying that that seems to be the, a, yep. a lot of equipment. I wasn't sure if it's like one bin. You're, okay. For, um, Here's the idea. Yeah. I mean, I'm just. What we like, what yeah. we like to see is initially 35 of these throughout the city, okay. and then eventually, hopefully, one in every neighborhood council area. So we're up to 97 neighborhood councils. Well, we're about to have 97 officially. Um, that would be probably the third week in May, we'll be up to 97. So um, that's what we're hoping for. Um, yes, line, uh, real quick and simple with regards to uh, bins. Standard format is 20 foot or 40 foot. Those are the lengths. You, you oh, no, I'm bins. just thinking because how big our councils are, having one and getting from you know, one point, I mean, no, no, what, what I'm getting, the physical bin itself, you can make your life a lot easier by having two 20-foot bins instead oh, no, of one 40-footer. Because the problem is, unless you have a panel on top, a battery, some LED lights inside, you can't see what's at the end of 40 feet, <laughs> even if it's aimed <coughs> south. You know, We've got it. Oh, no, I, I understand. I'm just we, thinking how yeah. big how big yeah, the council how is. And sure. getting people from one side of the council. Well, the, the, no, no, the, the one, yeah. the one, the one that... One bed yeah. friend C is a start. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, in Tarzana, yeah. yeah. In Tarzana yeah. the one we bought for for our community center. Okay, no, I is, is, is a twenty foot bin. And it's a fancy one because it's got a side door as well as an end door. Right, right. And it's got the, the whirly birds on top to pull the heat out and all that. 
Um, this but, is all great. I was just trying to figure out from my council. If I, yeah. we have it in one spot, people from the other side of the council. Will well, it's not that. okay. Let's we'll wait for more. Okay, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Hang on. No, let, let's, I understand. Yeah. Let's go with this concept. Yeah. Let's go with this concept. But anyway, I was just you're talking about people. Okay. Yeah, yeah. These are first responder right. material. Right, right. I understand. So yeah. Joe, stakeholder, who comes along and says, "I want to borrow one of your shovels." Isn't going to get it. Oh no, I I, I understand that. I was so, just trying to figure yeah. out the logistics of having a bin getting people to the bin. Right, that's right. that's and, all I was thinking. And before I call on, and I appreciate it. Here's the other problem to work on: neighborhood council by neighborhood council is where to put these. So it's, it's a huge problem. You can't put them at the schools because the schools <coughs> will be locked down. <coughs> you might be able to put them in a local fire station. The only problem is, uh, well. They also say, this is my house, so I am not sure I want you trooping through here to do thus and so. But some of them do have some outside area. Might have some churches, some temples that will uh, let you have zoning issues. We have there, the civic zoning issues with that. With that. Yeah. I understand that. I understand that. I understand. Um, but there's all kinds of things that can be fixed if necessary. You'd be surprised. We have a civic center with the Portland that's closed down. What? We have a civic center. With a defunct court courthouse that we could. Where's that? West LA. Oh, West LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. area. Um, there's there's a lot of different things. It can be private space. You know, it can be uh, one of your local retailers says, okay, see that corner of my parking lot? Go ahead and put it there. Um, things of that nature. But that's going to be one of the big problems because you've got to put down. City contract. You got to put down a slab or have concrete there to drop it up. Now the suggestion would be that the neighborhoods come up with their own individual solution. And well, that's, no, no, that's it. Each neighborhood. You shouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, you know, each neighborhood is going to have to come up with its own before solution. Before they get one, before they get a container. Oh, yeah, no, no. Propose it this is going to have to be, every neighborhood is going to be different. Right. Everybody's going to be different. That, that's going to be the thing. Does the 13,000 or 15,000 include the slab? It, it includes everything. Okay. Yeah. I figure that the initial cost of putting one of those down with a slab, um, just a plain one, is, is, is um, what do you figure, about 2500 No, more than that. Like no, no. The, the, the cargo containers themselves run about two grand. Not if you're buying the quantity. And, oh, there was, and there was a company, there was a company that wanted to give away 4,000 of them. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. You heard about this Korean company that went belly up, this is a shipping company? Oh, yeah. At the port, they've got four or five thousand empty containers that they want to give away. They can't give the bloody things away. You have to take all of them. Oh, we'll figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just—it's absolutely insane. It's one or two, maybe. Anybody got a truck? Yeah. So, so they just need somebody to come. They just need somebody to come because they—they they, they, they don't want to spend part of their money what's yeah, left of it to get rid of those. What? And they've been used <laughs> once. They've been used <laughs> once. So. No, there's, there's things out there that, that I'm sure we'll be able to work on. You know, if you're going to buy 35 containers all at one time and have them all delivered, who's ever selling the container is going to give you a discount um, on the container. Step, so gonna, step one is you got to get the council to go along with it. Step one, you've got to get the council and the mayor to say, yes, emergency preparedness is, is important. So we've got that. Okay, let me go on over here. And, and if it does, we've got to make, and even if it does or doesn't, we've still got to make every council aware of the whole idea and keep pushing. All right. Um, uh, what's your neighborhood council been doing to come out ready? Who knows? <laughs> let's, not get into that. let's not get into that one right now. I've got to talk to my, uh, my um, public safety chair and say, okay, enough neighborhood watch. I know we've got a bad burglary problem, but let's start talking about EP for a while. Um, all right. One of the things we've talked about is promoting this group and our goals. Um, we've got to let more neighborhood councils know about this. I don't care whether they come here. Hopefully, they'll get somebody to come to these meetings. But with these up on the web, they can go there. Um, we've got the recording. We've got all kinds of ways for them to see what's going on and what's happening. Um, but they've got to know we really exist. Uh, I, I didn't do it this time. 
just, I won't go into everything that was going on. I didn't send out a mass e-blast to the entire city. I generally sent out an e-blast. But by the time it was time, I said, if I send it out now, everybody's just going to cry. Why didn't you let me know two weeks ago? So. Can I, can I make a yeah, suggestion along that line? Uh, I don't know how many folks we have that are actively coming from the valley. What about the idea of alternating the meetings between here and the valley so you can get better participation from the other city? Um, you know, we've talked about that. And, and the beauty of... of this is partnering with EMD. That's the beauty of it. Um, I could get the Browdy out in the valley um, without a problem. But then, of course, it becomes very inconvenient for people who live in a place like San Pedro. That's why I said alternate. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we could look at that. Well, you want to alternate by coming to San Pedro? I'll go to San Pedro. Hey, <laughs> I mean, this is absurd. a chance to go down to the Whale and Ale and have some of their chowder? I'll be happy to go down there. Not a problem. Let me ask you a question. Not, not to undermine this study, but why couldn't the Valley have their an additional meeting, right? <laughs> Go for it. You like, the amount of work that you have. Because, <laughs> not necessarily for you, right? Like I have my neighborhood council emergency preparedness committee meeting. Right, right. Yeah, I know. Right? And then not a lot gets done in that. Right. So the what the people, the little doers, we all get together and we brainstorm things and actually get things done. Yeah, but then you've got to have somebody organizing it now. And you have two groups at that point. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. no, because I report back to the committee. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. I, I um, don't, I'm not coming up with, with new ideas. Yeah. I, I'm just informing those that don't necessarily come we, we can all get together for on. coffee. We can all get together for coffee. That's an idea. We have 97 neighborhood councils, right? We, we're about to have 96 and a half. Okay. We have 96 and a half. Uh, <laughs> Whoever worked with this, could you please say that? Um, we have nobody here from Herman. Okay, so there are probably like 20 people in this room or something like that. Yeah. So what I'm wondering is, do you have a contact for the emergency preparedness liaison from every single neighborhood they council? Have they don't all have one. They all have it. So, Lynn, why don't we um, so be rude and interrupt? Go ahead. What? Big up. Well, you've got half a... Sorry. Yeah, I, I've, got, I've got some things on there, some ideas. Hello? There you go. Okay, you've got how do we promote NCEPA. I assume that we were getting into that now. Yes, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about at some point. And however you want me to do this, my proposal is that this group, that we finish our talk, which was to, as far as I'm concerned, we talked about it six months ago, eight months ago, create a plan that includes the whole syllabus that we would take to the neighborhood councils and have it done. And my next suggestion is I'd like to invite Lucy Jones to see it and to come here to one of our meetings and to vet it and have a bit of a discussion. Is this what we really want to do? And so on. And then we uh, take it to neighborhood councils right after the beginning of the new fiscal year, because everybody restarts in July with new budgets, and often with whole new boards and so on. But the idea of inviting people to come to this meeting to talk about what we're going to do in the indefinite future is something that I don't really want to do. Uh, I just want to have the, our job done. So, uh, you know, that, that was my proposal that we finish up with the planning, devote a whole meeting, one more whole meeting to planning and putting it together in final form and then get the word out. And I want the mayor on board and I want the CAO on board and I want Rafe Sun and China on board, <coughs> and more than just lip service. You know, the, all this stuff we've been talking about, the legal issues about where you put the bin and so on, uh, I understand there's legal issues and stuff like that, but when they're brought up at the level that they're being brought up by, when you're quoting the city attorney's office and stuff, what I'm hearing is that they don't, they're not really taking it very seriously. They're, they're looking at the legal nitpicks, and I'm reminded of the old line that somebody referred to 
I think it was a Supreme Court justice who said the Constitution is a lot of things, but it's not a suicide pact. So, you know, if somebody's going to raise the issues, well, comes to my next question. My neighborhood council has about 27,000 people in it. That's relatively small by neighborhood council standards. Some of them have 100,000 plus. I don't think there's very many who have a lot less than 25,000. I know one that has 3,300, about to. Okay, <laughs> a whole neighborhood council out of nearly 100. So what we've got is approximately 100 neighborhood councils, and each one would have a bin, and that means that that bin will serve the needs of the first responders for, on the average, 40,000 people. Is that really enough bins? Is that really enough stuff? No, uh, where should, should they start. be situated? It, 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 it's and, one heck of a good start. Well, okay, but I'm not interested in a good start. I'm interested in an effective system. And I think it's useful to ask the questions at the beginning so that we don't go off in a way that's going to take so, us to an ineffective system. So what we need, we need to look at is, now we've got all these various plans, so the idea would, would be some type of outline, some type of guide for neighborhood councils as to what plans they can use, where to find them, or incorporate them um, within, give them copies, yeah. I mean, Can I interrupt one more? Go time? ahead. Okay. I come out of the neighborhood council system. In fact, I, if I get reelected or elected this time, I will be, along with Doug Everhart, the longest serving member of any neighborhood council board. Okay. It seems to me that emergency preparedness is something that goes beyond <coughs> neighborhood councils. Because we don't want, you know, in the whole harbor area, we have three neighborhood councils over 70,000 okay. people. Okay, This is something that ought to be a regional, fairly localized, but definitely regional alliance that goes beyond neighborhood councils. Neighborhood council will be part of it, and they are the communications aspect. They are the nucleus around which people come together. <coughs> but you know, I, I'm not particularly sanguine about Central San Pedro Neighborhood Council getting its shit together and being able to do anything useful over the next year or so. Uh, Coastal Will, Northwest Will, etc. So, you know, so what's the point? So who's got to die because we're dealing with Neighborhood Council internal politics? Uh, let's, make this, let's make this work in a logical system. I mean, the certain people here know what they're doing. The, ACS people know what they're doing, and none of them are saying that we are going to limit what we're doing to one neighborhood council, that would be absurd. Well, the idea, and the whole idea behind this is that neighborhood councils serve as a nucleus for their areas. Um, it's, a, it's something we can reach. Trying to reach all of the homeowners groups in the city of Los Angeles uh, would be a, a really interesting task. It's much easier to find who our neighborhood council people, and if we can get neighborhood councils moving, they're the ones that know who's in their neighborhood. I know who the... Um, that, that's what I mean when I yeah. say there's a communication. Yeah, yeah, because we get to the point... Thing. Yeah, we get the to the point... Yeah, the point is, okay, so what we... They we, don't have authority. Okay. But what we need to do is we've got to find a way to get more neighborhood councils interested, whether it be through a newsletter, whether it be through our social media, however it is. Um, that's the idea. We've, we've got to get them, we basically we've got to advertise ourselves. We, we've got to let people know who we are. Uh, maybe we can use ACS, maybe we can use CERT, you know, to promote this whole idea of neighborhood councils being the core groups to get their neighborhoods put together. But unless we get neighborhood councils here, you know, yeah. Bill gets, how many, how many neighborhood councils are signed up so far? For what? For, for the fair. What do you think? Depends on how you count them, but maybe five, six. Okay, that's it? So far. So Okay, because I've seen more people, more agendas with money. Right, but that hasn't happened yet. That's where you see, oh. that's why the, the signs up. Have money, paid money, want to come. Okay, okay, because I see, I see the, between 20 to 30 
neighborhood councils typically show up. Okay, okay. okay. So, so let, let's say 25 neighborhood councils, okay? Yeah. So that's 25... Most in the valley. Yep. <laughs> that was 25 neighborhood councils. No, we haven't. Last year you had you had one from the south side. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. I know. Yeah. But um, every, I say no. every, every year, Bill gets average 25 neighborhood councils who are aware of something that's going on. Now, if we could get 50 or 60 neighborhood councils around the city that's aware of what's going on, building on Bob's point, have something for them that we can say, okay, here's, here's what you can do. Here's how you can do it. Here are your resources for doing it. Because that's one of the big things. You know, you, think, you talk to people and they say, well, you really expect me to do all that? If you can hand them something that says, here's an outline of all the resources and where you can find them. And we've got a, a ready-made comm plan already. You can follow it. You can work on it. You can do it. Um, you don't have to build it again. It's going to be a lot easier. And, and, and I think that's what Bob is talking about, is turning out that type of thing. I agree. If you have a resource component that you can publish, that's a good start. But this BIM project, if you can get this to 25, 30 neighborhood councils and make it very public, the news covers this, EMD partners with the Neighborhood Council Emergency Preparedness Alliance and puts these emergency bins into these neighborhoods, all the rest of them are going to say, well, where's ours? Uh, How do we get ours? That way. Okay, well, yeah, it, it may, but here's, here's okay, I'll, get, I'll, give you, I'll give you something else. That, that, an advantage to coming to the emergency management committee. EMD has a nonprofit that interfaces with the business people in the city of Los Angeles. And they, one of the things that, I can't even remember his name right now, I've got his card, I'm terrible with names. Brent. Huh? Brent Linkworth. Yes. And he goes out and talks to businesses and he says, what do you need from the city in case of emergency? And he gave me an example, the, um, the, some of the major banks. What do you need? Their response, we need a good estimate of when we're going to get power back to run our stuff, okay? We need communication. Good. What can you do for us? If you've got to distribute food and water, we can let you use our, uh, our, um, <coughs> our trucks, the ones that deliver our money and everything. And if you really need somebody that's there as an armed guard, you can have them too. So they're cooperating back and forth. This is a resource for us to use to interface with the business community for placing bins, maybe for getting money for bins, I don't know. But these are the kind of assets that we need to do. And yes, the idea of getting a few of them, but you get somebody like Wentworth and he can interface with the, um, uh, what's it called, with the papers and such. He can help us advertise that these things are going in because if a business is saying, yes, you can put it at my place, they're going to get the publicity. They're also going to get the idea that they're helping the community and that becomes important. I think getting people who aren't involved in this, because I see the same basis here. Oh, yeah, everywhere. of course. Um, I think what you need to do is you need to reach out to people and have an outreach here and what's in it for me and having some kind of an item that you can give away here. I don't know what the, the money on that is, but I'm saying like a flashlight or something that would be every month that you could give something. <laughs> just suggesting to get, to get people saying, right. if you right. come right. here... It's called yeah, an incentive. An yeah. incentive. This that's, is that's all I'm saying. Is coffee. That, that's a good way to get people. Coffee. Huh? Well, coffee. coffee doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a couple, a couple of things. A couple of things. One is, um, in terms of getting uh, funding from local businesses, we could off, even offer to let, uh, let them put their logo on the side of the bin. Uh, uh, the city get kind of frowns on that. All right. Yeah, <laughs> All right. All right. So, now, now, what you can do, what you can do, however, what you can do is when you're announcing your bin. You can put sponsorships. Well, that's what I was going But you say. can't put it on the bin. You know, community services bin supported by. You, you, it, it, you, want, you want to put that on your website? That's great. You're okay. allowed to do that. Okay, more importantly, um, more than anything, I think we need concrete steps. I mean, I've gone to my council and I've gotten them interested in this. I won't say enthused yet, but they're interested. But where do I go from here? 
I mean, I don't have a list of what's going to be in the okay. bin. What do I, we don't I, have, I, I mean, I think we need to set. I made, I made a note to myself. Uh -huh. No, no, not just that. I think we need to set up a bunch of milestone goals to get where we want to be. I just want to speak on, 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 on the, your word about ambassadors. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, 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 uh, and the importance of the things. Now, I worked 9 11, you know, and we ran out of supplies because we didn't have such bins you know, in the street. We didn't have any way to go. You know? uh, so we were getting supplies from people coming and giving us supplies. And we did run out of it because we didn't have one bin, 35 bins, 97 bins. Yes, that was perfect. We had how to promote it. We tell people what it does. Yeah. As ambassadors, you know, we tell them. Yeah, the effect. So for me, my knowledge piece is well aware yeah, of my experience for 9 11, we speak on that. You know, when, when we talk about safety, when we talk about doing uh, CPR classes and, and first aid classes, we are we're about to do a certain thing to get great for the nobody. Yeah. So that's the way to do it, yeah? So we, we, we shouldn't downgrade one bin or 20 bins or how many bins. We should promote that even one bin state lives. Yeah, and we need to go that. Yeah. I think what Bob said is correct. We need a document with resources. Then the next best thing, once you have something in hand to work with, which we've talked about, as he said, for several months, is word of mouth, direct contact. Each we, we have members here scattered all over the city. If each one of us contacts three councils around us, visits them, with the document, that's the best way to get the word out. Well, oh, that was that's the ambassador. As, as, as my favorite example, my favorite example is the DWP MOU. I don't know how many people here were in on the original MOU, but there are some of us, and I was one of them. We went to the neighborhood councils and asked to be on the agenda, and we spoke to that issue. Okay, and we got initially 45 neighborhood councils. Um, to sign up for the MOU, and that's the way it worked. And what's MOU? Huh? Memorandum. Oh, Memorandum of Understanding. I'm sorry. We, we have an upcoming built-in opportunity to present this to potentially all the MCs at the upcoming Neighbor Council Congress in uh, September, Saturday, Saturday, September 9th. And uh, the workshops are being formulated right now. There can be a committee that can focus on this, a, a workshop or a, you know, a, a topic, a presentation at the Congress, uh, ACS, or you know, if it gets more than four parties, it, it perhaps becomes unwieldy right. and does everything and accomplishes nothing, but maybe three to four presenters get together for a workshop. Three. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'm making another note. But the idea is that we should ask the mayor and Gracie to make this a part of their keynote address presentations. Because this is something that is almost co equal with everything else the neighborhood council's doing. We need to get started on uh, some the, the mayor, Bob, the mayor, um, more than a year, uh, two years ago almost. Yeah, well, um, had he, he one of his little executive order things or whatever it was was emergency of uh, uh, preparedness. Okay, I understand that we're going to have six six hundred people or three hundred people in the council chamber, you know, in multiple sessions. Well, this is a chance to talk at them. The second thing is I'm going to repeat myself and make that risk. I'd like this this group get done with what it okay. would plan to do. And that means we have a full plan, which might be <laughs> pages longer, it might be 100 pages long, and it's something that we take out to neighborhood councils. I can do three or four or yeah. five harbor area, harbor city, and so <coughs> we put them, we get to put on the agenda. And you give a presentation and say, hey, what happens when the neighborhood gets, okay? You're not prepared. You don't okay. know what you're going to do, etc. We've got a, a message. We just need to put it together. I think. I, uh, <coughs> I, I think, Bob. I think I know where I can get some people who are good at writing city speak and everything. I don't want to write city speak. <laughs> I want to. Uh, I, know. I just want us to finish and yeah. you know I promise that as of the June meeting, we will have. That's what I was going to say. I, I, have I, finished. Okay. I, I would like us to establish a calendar that has our goals on it so that we know 
we can hold ourselves accountable to whether we're working within the time frame we foresaw or not. Because this could go on forever. Yeah, okay. More than All right. Um, speaking of June, um, I'll tell you right now in advance, the June meeting will be the third Saturday, not the fourth Saturday, because once again, this year, the budget advocates have taken the fourth Saturday for budget day, and their excuse is that that's when the various public officials were available, and I think that's <laughs> because they wanted to do it on the fourth Saturday. Yeah. They always do. And I think that's why it came out. So it'll be the third Saturday. Which is 17th? Uh, whatever the third Saturday. Be so I'll tell you in advance that it'll be one Saturday earlier, which means that I gotta go in and out one week earlier to, to, to keep up with that. Actually two weeks earlier because this is the fifth. Well this would well this would no no, but this is the fifth because I tried to avoid all of the um, Earth Day things on the fourth Saturday, but a number of them occurred. It's amazing. The only people I heard from this time were the people saying Thanks very much for sending me the notice, but I'm going to be in such and such an event, you know, for the environment or whatever it is. <laughs> There's all kinds of events going on. Here. Um, all right. Um, I, I think I think Bob's idea of a hundred-page document may be too much. Ooh, wow. I like the idea. Of, I did not say. <laughs> I like I like the idea. We have a all right. Okay. Okay. What what I like what I like is the idea. Um, of working on it, coming up. You guys have all seen these things, okay? Come up with some ideas and the kind of outline we would need for resources. What we really need is to point neighborhood councils to the resources. Where can they get these things? Where can they view these things? We know where the, where the videos are. Like if they wanted to um, look at Topanga stuff, and I can get Topanga's book, okay? Um, and I imagine, well, probably copyrighted, but I imagine they'd let us reproduce it if we talk to them nicely. We've got an emergency communications plan. We've got all these different things that, that neighborhood councils can gather together to say, okay, they can cherry pick what they want for their neighborhood. Uh, they can do that. So uh, I think that's, that's where we'll go. Okay. okay. Um, Sorry. How many of these important people, most of whom are in this room, would be willing to get together, let's say, two Saturdays from today and complete the plan? You know, so Depending on where it is. Well, here would be perfectly fine if we can get it. That's the question. That, that, I, that, I, I used to like Philippe's, but it's noisy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, okay. Two he, Saturdays from now is private service day. Yeah, here, here, here it, it, the problem has to do with budgetary issues. Okay, so... Whatever the problems are, I, I skip next Saturday because it's my neighborhood council election. Okay, Saturday after that will be the second Saturday. No, it's actually a selection. Never mind. So he's going to argue. We won't go in. It's an irrelevancy <laughs> to us. Okay. Can we finish the job? and come up with a syllabus so that I can go to all the neighborhood councils in my area and you can go to the neighborhood councils in your area. You've got the book. You know, Kinko's will put them together for two bucks. You know, well, you've got the book. You take it to them. Okay, Bob, I, mean, I have a key to the Civic Center if you want to do it there. What's that? I have a key to the Civic Center now if you want to do it there. Civic Center, West LA. Oh, 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 yeah, they're, they're in location. 405. Yeah, right off the 405. Oh, that's my iPad. I would that since we already saw the date for the next meeting, I don't think so. That either. we simply maybe have an extended uh, meeting or a uh, break for lunch and then come back and then continue. Well, once again, coming back here has to do with budgetary. Well, if, I don't know, uh, since we already are here for that morning, Sending it into the afternoon. That would be twenty seven. We can do it we can do it we can do it as a committee as a whole. Come back with your ideas. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it as a committee as a whole. Come back with your ideas. Come back with, with, with where we get the, where where are our resources? Where are we you looking? Know that, you know that Lynn's email. You got my email or I can write it on the board. 
But I think that we've accumulated the ideas over the last 16 months or so. So I don't know that we need a lot of new ideas. We need to agree on how we put them together and how we limit them. Most of those ideas, I don't think have ever been written down or stuff. Now there are some, we have the, the white the stuff on the board, I've got pictures of all of them. But well, we, we need a good scribe for that day. Um, maybe I can convince somebody. Okay, that's the 27. I can't be here. I'm sorry. Send your ideas. May 27. Um, that, that'll be the next meeting. So we'll devote the meeting. Start putting things together now. Um, if you want to send them to me, send them to me via, you know, whatever you do, and I'll turn around and send them out to everybody else so that everybody gets to see what everybody's ideas are. The focus is, can we say in one or two sentences what the plan is okay. supposed to do? What the plan is supposed to do is to allow, okay. That's the hard part. Okay, Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What, 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 what I don't think we want to do is sit down and start all over and write a manual, okay? Maybe that was an original idea. I think what we really want to do is we want to sit down and we want to give a guideline to neighborhood councils on how they can put together what resources they can use for an emergency plan. So that's a manual? We, we, well, yeah, but it, it is a manual. Why should 97 neighborhood councils write their own manual when we can do it in, no, no. in a matter of two hours? Yeah, the other, the other thing I'll is... I, I can go to my council and tell them all these resources and they can look at this and look at that. But the truth of the matter is they're going to say, Ron, you're our emergency preparedness guy. Show us what you want and we'll vote yes or no. Okay, then, then it's easy enough. Uh, what we do is we sit down and we take all of the, we take the five-step program, we take Jumpstart, we take it off the web, and we put it into a manual okay. all in one place. That's not difficult. We plagiarize from everybody. It's already there. It's not hard. It's already there. You're going to walk in and hand it to them. Just download it. Okay. Why do we have to take one of this? So come up with the ideas, and that's what we'll end up doing. I'll, I'll get your, your, your stuff. I'll get Topanga. Well, Topanga stuff is a giant book. But um, I'll, we'll just download the stuff and put it together, figure what all we need to download, how we put it together, and how we present it. Because you can't just give them book. You just can't handle it. Too much. Yeah. It's got to be a small amount of stuff. Yeah. You can't just the, 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 the manual, as I'm referring to it, is basically your outline for when you present. We can't to hear you up here. Council. Please use the mic. I can't hear you. Be up. It reminds me of a movie. Okay, all I'm saying is when I use the word the manual, just like I would use the word PowerPoint, it's your your organizational thing for when you present to your neighborhood council. This is your list. You know, I mean, it starts with the fact that, hey, we could have an earthquake any day, and most of us have no idea what to do, and most of us don't have supplies, even in our own homes. And the neighborhood council can now become a part of a system where everybody's going to learn what to do. And that's pretty much the message, and after that, everything else becomes details. All of that is already on the EMD. Well, not all of it. You take, you, okay. What we have to do is we have to have a place to put it. Um, um, Lorraine Curry's presentation last month, you know, that's a good um, um, resource for people. No, it really is. I know, I mean. I'll do that. Aha! That's a good, uh, I, do you have a copy of it? Yes, of course. Good. Would you email that to me? Yes, I will. Lorraine said she would, but she's been having a few problems at home. Great. People have asked me for it. People have said, can you come out to my neighborhood council and show that? Okay. And I said, yes, but I'm in a way of good. You know how to reach me? Yeah, happy email. Good. Uh, but, but something like that. Now, we're not going to go and give that to somebody. We're going to have to have that someplace where they can go and look at it. Okay? I imagine we could give them the, 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 the PowerPoint, but it'd be easier for them to go someplace and look at the PowerPoint. And that's the kind of thing that we need to have. Okay. okay. Um, I will disappoint somebody who is going to come here and take about an hour and 45 minutes for presentations and tell him he's going to be here in June as opposed to May.
I thought I'd give him plenty of warning. So I figured he'd want about 45 minutes. He says, no, I want about an hour and 45 minutes. What's that? Huh? I has to do, um, um, uh, Bill Pope has some good stuff on, on emergency uh, uh, prep because of what he does. So, um, okay. So, then what we'll have to make a determination is put together an actual book with all of these things or put together some type of outline with where these resources are. I'm getting the idea that people are saying the ones that we can actually download and put into the book, download them and put them into the book. You know, let people say here they are. And that's it. That's what, by the way, that's what Topanga does. You know, they produce this, this giant book and they hand it out to everybody. And everybody's got the same thing in it. So maybe that's what we do here. Go from there. Yeah, I know. But you so want a list of people who want to work on A few people, a few you people. You gotta get, you know, we already, we you already contact those twice. people that will work on it. Yeah. And the whiteboard yeah. is I know what you mean. part of it. It's the big, Sorry, I'm not trying to interrupt with everything. You know what I'm going to tell you the biggest problem? The biggest problem is people don't believe it. Well, it's not that they don't believe it's going to happen. There, 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 there. It's called yeah. denial, okay? <laughs> take, okay? You take my area, Woodland Hills, Tarzana, Encino, Sherman Oaks. Now, that area was getting hit on a daily basis on residential buildings. I mean, in my area, little area of Tarzana, south of the border, we were up to as many as six per day, okay? We've got some gangs coming in, professionals, heating houses. They walk off with safes that are bolted to the floor, which means they're coming in with jacks and things like that, all right? Within a very short time, Tarzana South had 1,600 people on their um, Facebook site, all right? Because it was happening right now. Now, if we could get ourselves maybe a 6.2 or 6.4. <laughs> <laughs> but the memory, the memory the after four, that that's is that's about a week. Yeah, yeah, well, that's okay. Um, we, we got that, we got that. And that's one of the major problems is people just say, well, I know it's going to happen, but maybe it won't happen in my lifetime and things like that. If I can get um, uh, either Lucy Jones or, or Kate Hutton's slideshow, it says, here is a 7.4 or 7.6, I can't remember what it was, on the San Andreas. Let me show you in 10 second intervals what this looks like oh, yeah. coming out from there. That's and you so watch good. it and you go, oh my goodness. <laughs> if we could show that, maybe it would help. That, I, I don't think people just believe that. I think what's missing is there are small things you can do that will help you. It's and that's the part that's, yeah. if you're overwhelmed, you just yeah. deny it. Uh, you know. But here, just get yourself uh, two cases of water, put it away. Food. Small steps that you can do, that's yeah. the recipe. Buy, buy yourself a, a, a radio. Yeah. And hand crank. Just simple um, things. I think um, part of this is you're looking at, again, the earthquake that happens every 20, 25 years. But what happened the last couple of days, Windstorm. Yeah. Oh, right. And I think what you Storm. really need today is the small stuff. Say, you know what? That earthquake may or may not happen, but we have windstorms, we have power outage, we have all of these things, which is basically a disaster. Yeah. You know, and that happens all the time. For that. Yeah. You know, a fire. But I'm just saying so you can use the small things yeah. that will translate mm -hmm. into a big thing. It's still disruption of service. I, I was I was in a meeting and my wife called me and said, Power power's out. Power's gone. What do I do? Wait, it's, it really is the same thing. And, and I say, you know, you, know where, you know where the emergency lights are? And she went in and took out the emergency lights, turned them on, and she was fine. That's all. She, what she really cared about was, what the hell am I going to do without bumping into things in the house? You, know? you guys are talking about how people are motivated. I mean, 
I am particularly interested in a major earthquake. I think all the others are handleable by our emergency responders. Yes. You know, uh, we've had lots of fires. When when you put that map up showing all the different canyons, all I could think of was the brush fire at Laurel, the brush mm -hmm. fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I am old enough to have watched the side of the mountains. That, that, that's one that's of the biggest the, questions the, I get asked: is where so, do we evacuate? So I think that the it's remark that perfect. you need to tell people it's yeah. not hopeless, it's not you're dead, is that you can be pretty damn uncomfortable and you may be very thirsty unless you take some simple precautions to move across the river. Hey. And that's that's a very good message to yeah. start with. Yeah. And once they get that far and then they get into the radio stuff, then they learn all that other stuff. Then they yeah, what well, they go around. It's a very good idea. Yeah, when I tell people that CERT is not just about responding, it's about you being prepared for yourself and to take care of your family during the time of the disaster. Whether the power's out, whatever, if you don't become a victim in that disaster, then the fire department doesn't have to worry about you. That's it. That's it, you know. And you, you take Bob's area, well, it's one of the main concerns. It's one of those great big tanks that are sitting there rupturing or something and sending out this this wonderful cloud of ammonia or whatever that might be in that tank. Yeah, we don't have to worry about that. They do. You know. Um, the only thing I have to worry about my air is they're filming too much. How do I get around? Yeah. But, no. but you know that you know it's it's it just convincing people that it's gonna happen. Something. Do you know anything um, in the mayor's budget proposal? Recently, the current budget proposal, yeah. there was a, a line item about earthquake warning system. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 is yeah. That, yeah, the, the warning, the, the statewide warning system. Is that specific? Are they going to, I was just thinking, is that something they're going to do in neighborhoods? That, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, our action item for this is well, if you can, yeah, about, about, it's, it's, it's the joint, I can get you the, I don't have a um, send me an email saying I need some stuff on the budget, and I'll send you back two pages or three pages, whatever it is, okay, um, whatever it is, uh, from, from the proposed budget, it's, it's the, um, it's the budget.